First part of this video is kind of boring. It's essential. Comping and writing. Good. Listen to the end. That's where all the major keys are. The effects stuff and the mixing stuff. Really, really cool. I'm really proud of that part. And then the whole video isn't right without the main mixing video. Check that one out. Here we go. 19, but she know what it do. Find me, make it dinner for two. Comping. That's the first one. Taking all the tracks and putting them in one or two main tracks and taking out all the other ones you don't need. And the best tip that I could give here when doing all this is keep the metronome on while you're doing it down here. Make sure that everything's on beat like that because just throwing words together, how it sounds to you, might sound fine, um, but have your track playing with this track. You know, you could turn the track quieter and you could bring your vocals up when you're comping this, but always make sure you're referencing back to what the music is. So everything's on beat and you're on beat to the metronome and nothing gets messed up like that because it's really hard to fix once you take everything out and consolidate everything um, to go back to. Writing. This part is the worst part. Writing is essential and it's actually needed for like people who don't even use Soundtrap right now, like pro mixers and just like, you know, average people who are going beyond, you know, getting their music to sound the best. I ride, if I'm putting anything out on Spotify or whatever the hell, I'm writing every single vocal that I can manually with the vocal automation. So this is what it is. Taking that vocal automation on your main track that you have of your vocals and going in and doing, I would say just two rides for uh, soundtrack vocals. One is boosting any words that you want to, you know, higher or lower and boost any section you want higher or lower. It's likely that if you have like a chorus section and a verse section, I don't know, like a singing part and a rap part or a falsetto singing or something like that, you know, just a high singing, there's going to be variation in the level that you see. And the biggest indicator of this is actually looking at your volume and saying, oh my God, okay, that is a lot louder than this section and this section is more than this one. So all that stuff needs to be equalized because if you have effects, especially things like compressors, which are essential for getting something really, really popping in your face with vocals, it's going to hit that vocal differently and the effects will affect your vocal differently if it's coming at dramatically different points. But that's your first ride that I'd suggest. And what I did after was go through and take out the S's at this stage too. The S's and the T sounds also need to be road, rided, whatever, out because uh, there's no DS or plugin in Soundtrap. So what this is, is the S sounds and the T sounds really, really stick out once you start affecting, especially reverbs, but compression, they're really in your face once you start doing this stuff. I'll go over this in the writing video, absolutely, more in depth, but know that it's two rides right now. One to equalize levels of vocals and of words, and the other is to DS, basically, and to refine individual words themselves out. What I did up until this point was set you up for this section. I'm going to give a bunch of general tips in this section, but this mixing section is wildly going to vary by the different types of songs that you have. And the first one is cutting out the rumble. Second is subtly doing a shelving trick, usually boosting around 5k, which is the presence of things. And this band on the EQ curve, cutting maybe around 21, 2500, which is this band and then parallel compressing. So each one of these in order is the rumble. These last two bands on the EQ curve are sub. They're the lowest frequencies you, humans can hear. Don't muddy your track up with these. You can't hear these frequencies in your vocals. Like even if you heard them, they wouldn't stand out as what the vocal is doing. Absolutely cut them out. And sometimes I even go in with two EQs to start just to make sure that they're gone from my track. Because all that it does is add sub, which your bass should be taking up, and then makes your sub louder and competes with the rumble that's in your vocal track. And then it's going to make your whole track louder and you can't get the thing equalized enough because there's just too much happening in the sub. 
The next one is the shelving trick. This one, like I'm saying, usually if it's on computer mics, which is the vocal that I used, uh, which is the mic that I used for this vocal too, I just recorded my computer mic. I definitely needed this trick or something like it, but cut out the bass sounds around the lower end of the frequency spectrum too. The shelving trick, the reason it's called a shelf is because, you know, complex parametric EQs have this thing called a shelf and we're kind of doing the same thing in Soundtrap. Huge at shelving. So usually because of the proximity effect, you get 250, 300, 400 hertz as your lead part of your, mm -hmm. your frequency mm -hmm. in a vocal. I like to, sh you know, do a nice little shift. So if you look at my EQ, it looks like a wave going down to take all that out. And that is revolution. When I learned that type of scoop, Right Probably like eight years ago, changed my life because I used to do just you know bells. Mm -hmm. But when I did that, you know, almost like the tilt, right. um, it, it changed my life. This is going to depend on how good your ear is for hearing different EQ places and what you want to hear out of the vocal and what you should boost and cut, and what your track is doing and the other instruments in it. The next one is uh, EQing up around the five K region. This region is. Uh, the presence in any sound and because vocals are the main part of any song or they should be mixing wise it's probably going to be taken up by the vocals in that place or any other lead instrument you have will go at about this place in the eq curve this is a good place to mention also that's the place to accentuate the eq right around 5k if you want to you know accentuate that part in the vocal don't make big eq moves it's the biggest mistake that all people make when they're starting mixing. I heard this from every single person that I listen to and watch on YouTube, in person, anything, is don't make huge EQ moves. Big EQ moves would be something like this, like taking the knobs, especially in the soundtrack EQs, which are pretty scratchy, right? And really cranking the things up. Masking is taking out the frequency bands that you like in other instruments for and leaving the space open for the instrument that you want. So if you want to boost this high, this 5k in the vocal, take out the 5k and like the pad that you have in the background, right? It's probably not necessary for that sound to have such a presence in that range and take it out as much as you can, you know, like don't make wildly crazy moves. Also a little bit goes a long way with this kind of stuff but mask a bunch of different things for the vocal. I usually leave my drums alone. I don't really mask the drums with my vocals um, a lot. I usually just leave them kind of blank. You want the, this presence and this snap to your drums and you do too much with the EQs on the drums and it gets really weird. But yes, usually with vocals, I'm boosting around the 5K area, the presence area, and then I'm masking that in other instruments if they're not already taken care of like that. And like I said, I usually cut around the 2100, 2500 range, which is this band on the EQ and Soundtrap with vocals. That is an essential also. Like I always used to do this on like every single vocal that I had when I first learned the trick because I thought it sounded so cool and all I could do was add. Not all vocals need it. Absolutely, right? Like it's, it's totally not an every vocal thing. But that's, you know, mess around with these things and know that a lot of the cases... A lot of the rap vocals especially will need a little bit of cut around 2500 it's a very annoying frequency to human ears and then a bit of boost in uh, 5k another side thing to mention is that these three bands around you know uh it's like fifth to seventh fader on the eq curve if you just have those it's like the telephone effect and here you go that's the telephone effect that you see on tiktok a lot of the time there you go pretty cool and the last one uh, with mixing is parallel compression. Here's my voice with parallel compression that you've been hearing the entire video, and here's it without parallel compression. It doesn't seem like too, too big of a difference, but if you could hear that, uh, turn your volume all the way down, like as quiet as you could hear it in whatever environment you're in right now. And now hear the difference. I'm gonna turn the parallel on, and this is me with the parallel on, and parallel compression on my voice as it is right now and then here's with it off it's probably harder to tell right now in my voice what i'm saying at a low volume like this that's essential man that's that par if you're not paralleling your vocals you're going to take an l on this vocal that is, that's something that is almost essential for every single one 
that you do. And here's how to parallel compress, right? Because we have to work around it in Soundtrap. I usually duplicate the track that I have. I will have my main vocal track and then right here, press duplicate and another one pops up. With this track, I go in, put a heavy compressor on it after I've made all the EQ moves. So it's basically the same thing. And then turn the volume all the way down. I listen to the main vocal again, and then slowly bring up the vocal to the compressed track. Always make sure you're naming things too. It really helps with tips like this. But I'm blending it back into the track slowly until it gets a little bit weird. Mixing at semi-high of a volume here would be good too, just so you could hear the detail in all of the things and the moves that you're making. So bring that up slowly, and you'll have a clean vocal on your hands. All right, so effects. This is the big one. This is this is what we've all been waiting for. If you put that damn reverb knob on the vocal that you have right now, there's like no point in doing all that other stuff up until then because it's just going to mash and blend everything together. There's the reason people use reverb so much on stuff. It's such a common thing to be like, I'll oh, just toss some reverb on it, man. We'll fix it with the reverb and stuff. It's because it just makes everything messy, especially when you have really wavy vocals and you're putting a lot of reverb on things. And what I'm saying is you could have the clean vocal that you have, you could have all the power of that, which is essential, right? If you, to have a nice, clean, upfront vocal to making something sound pro, and then you could blend back in as much reverb as you want without losing that bite and the clarity that comes with the main vocal. And you don't want to hide anything because we got something good now. We've tried this hard and we've got something really presentable and clean. Now we're not going to mask it with the reverb and not make it sound like some weird, washy, amateur reverb sound and delay. But we're going to make it sound good. All right, so here's what I do as well. I take the main vocal that I have and I make another duplicate track, just like the parallel stuff. And I'm basically paralleling in a reverb track. What this is doing is separating out both of the tracks and giving each of them their own effects rack to implement them with. Here's the main tips that I want to get across with this. A reverb track. Duplicate it, get it across, shift the vocal track a little bit, the entire vocal track just a little bit to the right in time of the main one. Zoom in pretty close, get it about there. And what that's doing is adding something called pre-delay. Do this to taste as well. It, it's not a uniform length for every single vocal. This is up to you. But pre-delay is an effect in good sounding normal reverbs that we don't get in Soundtrap that now we're putting back because we have this control. And what it does is it just delays the sound like we're doing of the reverb when the vocal hits. And what it does is give the main vocal a space to hit you before you hear this reverb, just milliseconds. Add pre-delay, you know, add the verb on the main track, and I would add the verb that is in effect and turn the knob all the way up instead of just doing the one on the main track. If you just do the vocal that's on the main track, it blends in with the original signal and you're getting a double of the original vocal while you're doing this parallel track. And that's not always wanted. You have a lot more options for reverbs as well if you just put the effect on. You could even dial this up and blend two reverbs together. You know, there are no rules to these kinds of things. So check it out, see what you want. But have one of these main vocals on and try to get your dry vocal out. Make it sound really, it's wet sounding is what it's called. Having only the reverb signal come through this track. The next thing that I do, and a big benefit and control for getting a reverb in its own track, is we could EQ it like it's its own instrument, which is essential in getting any reverb sound. The reverbs that we have on the main one have every single frequency that the main vocal is reverbed. That doesn't even occur in nature, man. Like, it, we don't just hear things like that. When you have, like, reverbs against walls and things like that they're usually dampened a little bit depending on how far away in the room you are in your position and everything but we usually cut a little bit of the high end and the low end rumble out of the reverb the reverb also adds like i said that low 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 rumble that we took out in the beginning so all of that good stuff that we're doing in the beginning by cutting out 
that rumble and taking it away from the sub is just added right back on this track in your reverbs. Even in any track, by the way, I'm cutting out, I'm using just main reverbs, just effect reverbs, and cutting out the rumble afterwards. So that, you know, rumble really gets cut out of there. But we have the main verb on it. We could EQ after the verb is on the reverb track. Don't be afraid to add effects to your effects. That's an awesome quote. So here I'm using a delay before I have my reverb. That's a subtle example. You could add 100 reverbs. I, I don't care. I'm the thing, right? Just go crazy with this stuff. Experiment. But now that we have this other track, we can control all the experimentation that we have going on. Again, none of this makes sense unless you watch that video at the end with everything mixed together. I'll link that down below. And that's pretty much it because vocals aren't too tricky, right? Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, if I missed anything. It won't be perfect, so check that out, you guys. And I appreciate the like and sub and any engagement for a small channel. We're just starting out. Um, so thank you guys very much for that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. 19, but she know what it do. Chico